Hi, my name is Isabel. I'm here to introduce our main speaker tonight, Bishop Jill Duff, the Church of England Bishop of Lancaster. Bishop Jill is originally from Bolton and she went to my school. She became a Christian through the youth ministry at St Andrew's Church over Holton. Bishop Jill studied science and chemistry at Cambridge and Oxford and worked in the oil industry before being ordained in the Church of England. She has planted new churches in the Liverpool Diocese and ran a theological college before becoming a bishop last year. My name is Jill Duff and I'm the Bishop of Lancaster and I believe in Bolton. I was born and brought up in Bolton and Bolton always feels like coming home. What I love about Bolton is people have such warmth and wit and sense of humour. I laugh a lot when I'm in Bolton. We've got some amazing comedians in our history. My all time favourite is Peter Kay. Peter, if you're watching, I went to your school for a chemistry quiz in 1987. I think we're in the same school year, so that was my one brush with fame. But this lovely Bolton warmth and wit, it's not just famous names, it's friends and neighbours, people in the streets and on the bus. I laugh a lot when I'm in Bolton and I think that's something from the heart of God. He believes in Bolton and I think he's put such deep wells of joy in our town. Though sometimes those wells get blocked and I'll come on to that later. But as I said, I grew up in, in Bolton and over Holton. And in many ways, I'm a Church of England success story because my family didn't go to church, but I went to the local Church of England primary school, um, St Andrews. And through that, I started going to church. When I started in reception, you see, there were these pictures of Jesus on the wall and I started to have dreams about him. And then when I was in year three, I was given a Bible and I started to read stories about Jesus. And at the end of year six, I went on an activity holiday in, uh, with my church and my leader said to me, have you ever heard of the Holy Spirit? I thought, no, I've heard of God the Father, I've heard of Jesus, but I've never heard of the Holy Spirit. And she said, don't just read the Bible like it's a normal book, ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes. So I prayed and it was like Jesus walked off the page of the Bible and into my life like a real living person alive today. It was my first time away from home um, for a whole week in my life. And I distinctly remember when I met my mum at Manchester Oxford Road Station, I bounded up to her and said, Mum, Mum, I've given my life to Jesus. <laughs> and she was horrified. She thought I'd been brainwashed. And um, she continued to think that for many years ahead, actually, um, especially when I left my job working in an international oil company um, to go and train to be a vicar in the Church of England when I was 27. But to finish her story, six just over six years ago, um, I went to visit her and um, she was in St Anne's Hospice in Little Holton because she got cancer. And when I got there, she said, you've got to come along the corridor with me to the chapel. I thought, oh, that's not a strange thing for my mum to say. And um, she, so I went to, to the chapel with her and she said, um, I was here last night. I was asking God to make her back better because she had a, a, her back was poorly with the cancer. And she said, it was like Jesus was here and he was telling me it's going to be okay. And she said, that's what you've been trying to tell me all these years, isn't it? And I don't quite know what happened to her that night, but um, we are from a family of worries. If we could worry about something, we'd worry about it. But all I can say is that she approached her death four months later on Easter day with an incredible sense of peace. And here's a lovely um, sort of postscript to the story, because when I became Bishop of Lancaster, my old church, St Andrews, um, invited me back to preach. And a big shout out to anyone from St Andrews who's watching here tonight. Um, and when I came to it and I turned over the page of my diary, I realised I was going back to St Andrews where we'd had my mum's funeral on, um, the, on Mother's Day and on the 31st of March, which is exactly her, her, her anniversary of her death, um, six years um, earlier and the lovely thing is that on that day I was surrounded by mums and dads who'd encouraged me in my um, in, in, in my life, that who'd encouraged me to feel to be at home and um, uh, when the service ended the organist struck up with a, um, my mum's favourite um, Puccini, Puccini Ari, she'd love singing you see and um, I said oh gosh how did you how did you know that? Um, it's very thoughtful of you, she said oh no just just picked it um, and yet another coincidence. I don't know if you notice in coincidences at the moment. Um, William Temple, who was Archbishop of Canterbury during the Second World War, said this. He said, when I pray, coincidences happen. When I don't, they don't. 
And it seems that all the data is at the moment that people are reaching out in prayer more than ever before. Russell Brand did this great video on Twitter last week. I don't know uh, whether you spotted it, but he said, why are people Googling prayer? And he answered it with this. He said, what we all need is a connection to the sacred. And the fact that people are Googling prayer suggests to me we need to find a way to pray together. You see, I think coincidences are a calling card to God's spirit. And I think we're waking up as a nation to his whispering. It's as if the airways have suddenly become clearer and we're hearing things in ways we haven't done before. Selfishness has become socially unacceptable. Community spirit is alive and well. We're clapping our NHS workers. We're Captain Tom's our hero. The environment is having a Sabbath. There's a great awakening of poetry and song. People are asking about the quite big questions in life and waking up to what really matters. And here's the thing. I think the biggest whisper of all, what God is saying over Bolton tonight is this. I miss you. Please come home. My favourite verse in the Bible is Matthew chapter 9, where it says, Jesus saw the crowds and he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And as I pray for Lancashire as a bishop at the moment, I, I just see lots of huddled sheep um, scattered across Lancashire, across our nation with no shepherds, terrified in fear of their lives. And this word compassion in the passage, what it really means is like gut twisting agony. It's the same word we get in the story Jesus told called the parable of the prodigal son where a son leaves home, he's had enough for his dad, he spends his money on all sorts of things. Then one day he wakes up and thinks, what am I missing out on at home? He turns around, starts back, but when the son's a long way off, it says this, the father saw the son and his heart was filled with compassion and he ran and threw his arms around him. And I think there's an incredible agony in the heart of God for his lost sons and daughters who is longing to come back home. And this agony is so intense, it's forcing its way into our culture. Ikea will sell you a happy life at home, won't they? Um, right Move will sell you a for forever home. It's forcing its way into our films. In the last two Star Wars films, Han Solo pleased with his estranged son Kylo Ren, we miss you please come home. We get this in The Greatest Showman, he sings through the dark, through the door, through where no one's been before, there's somewhere that feels like home. I think God has put this longing for home in the hearts of his children and in this crisis we're starting to wake up to tune in and hear. And maybe that tonight or whenever you watch this you feel a tugging in your heart for home. Not for home in Bolton, as amazing as that is, but home close to the heart of God. And you may not have ever realised this, but I think he loved you before the dawn of time. He made you to be close to his heart as his beloved son, as his beloved daughter. And lots of things can get in the way of us hearing or feeling that. The airwaves can get jammed with noise, especially the noise of pain. And it may be tonight that you sense Jesus drawing near to your heart. For some of you, I think he's wanting to gently remove those like dark shards of pain, like I, I almost see it like dark glass that's got trapped in your heart that's causing you so much agony that you cannot hear his joy and his delight over you. But the thing is, I think in my experience, Jesus is a great heart surgeon. No operation is too difficult or complex and he wants your heart to be beating well again, close to his. He wants you to come home. Or for some of you, I think like me, you come from families of warriors, um, and fit, I mean, fear has its place. I mean, it stops us getting run over by buses. But for some of us, I think we're living with far too much fear for far too long. Martin Luther, who was a famous teacher in the church 500 years ago, he said this. He said, you can't stop the birds flying over your head, but you can stop them nesting in your hair. And I think some of you have not just got fears flying over your head, but they've made themselves well and truly at home in your hair and in your heart, especially the fear of death. And I think that Jesus uh, can come tonight and he's unbind, he wants to unbind those fears, those dark bindings on your heart. Uh, but some of you have kept captive, almost uh, like breathless for many years. It's not too difficult for him to break their hold. He broke the hold of death by dying on the cross. 
And it's his, his resurrection power, the power of the, the spirit of Jesus that brought him back from the dead. That's the power that can release uh, your life. And um, he wants to come, you to come home and say, be safe from all your fears. And finally, for some of you, I think you've been living in deep sadness for far too long. Mourning, almost crushed to the point of death. When Jesus made his debut speech, when he um, came back home as an adult, he quoted this passage from the Old Testament from Isaiah 61. It says this, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And it goes on to comfort all who mourn, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. And maybe tonight he's wanting to break the dams of all those pent up tears you have held in your heart for so many years, afraid to let them out. In a place he wants you to experience his rivers of joy rushing into your life. At the end of the Bible it says that one day there'll be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. God will wipe every tear from our eyes. And I think that's what he's wanting to start on tonight. He's wanting to, to wipe away tears, to invite you home to his heavenly welcome party. You see, Jesus once said that coming home to God, kind of coming home to heaven, is like coming home to this incredible party, a banquet of amazing food and wine. Everyone is invited. And maybe tonight's the night when you realise there's a party waiting for you. He has so, so much missed you. Why not turn around, come home, no questions asked. He's waiting to throw open the doors, put a crown of beauty on your head instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair, with all the agony in the father heart of God, with tears running down his face. He's running towards his lost sons and daughters and he's sobbing from his heart. I miss you, please come home. Let's pray. Jesus, I think some of us here tonight are hearing you say, please come home. And in your name, I want to break off those bindings of fear that have trapped us for many years. I invite you to take out those deep shards of pain. Start your work on our hearts. And maybe for some of you, you literally for the first time want to turn around, come home. And would you know that Jesus is waiting for you with open arms? He has an incredible crown to put on your head. He wants you to hear the song of his heart that says, you are my own dear son, you're my own dear daughter, you are well, I'm well pleased with you. And I'm just going to invite his spirit to make that a reality to us now. The Spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit. This is an ancient prayer. So come down, O most powerful Holy Spirit, and subdue us. From heaven where the ordinary is made glorious, and glory is but ordinary. Would you open our ears to hear the whisperings of your song of love? Would you open our eyes to see you as you really are? Would you bathe us with the brilliance of your light like you? And fill us with your peace that passes all understanding because you have conquered. <laughs>